During the Civil War, a Confederate general led a daring raid deep into the heartland of America in Indiana and Ohio, in which he was captured and imprisoned. He managed to escape that prison only to find death waiting for him back in the Confederacy. Today we tell the story of General John Hunt Morgan's last days. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, a History of Appalachia. Steve, I've got to say that I'm very interested in this. I've heard of General John Hunt Morgan before, but I'm not familiar with his last days and what happened to him and what he did. I, I, I was aware that, he, of course, of being a Confederate general, leading raids and so forth, but I didn't quite understand what was the big deal all about it. But now we're getting ready to find out. Yes, indeed. And, and his end was met in East Tennessee, right mm. in the heart of Appalachia. Wow. Well, John Hunt Morgan was born in Huntsville, Alabama on June 1st, 1825 to Calvin and Henrietta Morgan. Now, Morgan came from an impressive family. You see, his grandfather was John Wesley Hunt, one of the founders of Lexington and one of the first millionaires in eastern Kentucky. He was also the descendant of Revolutionary General Daniel Morgan. Now, all that prestige and all that wealth apparently didn't help John Morgan's parents, for in 1831, Calvin Morgan, a pharmacist, lost his home when he was unable to pay the property taxes after his pharmacy failed. The family was forced to return to Lexington, where Calvin Morgan managed one of John Wesley Hunt's large farms. And, Rod, it was on that eastern Kentucky farm where John Hunt Morgan grew up. Morgan attended Transylvania College for two years before being kicked out for dueling with a frat brother. And in 1846, John Morgan enlisted in the U.S. Army as a cavalry private during the Mexican-American War. He fought in the Battle of Buena Vista and was made a lieutenant. After the war, he returned to Kentucky and became, of all things, a hemp farmer and got married. But war was in his blood. As the Civil War grew closer, John Hunt Morgan raised an independent infantry company known as the Lexington Rifles. After the death of his wife in 1861, Morgan went to Tennessee with the Lexington Rifles, and together they joined the Confederate Army, with Morgan becoming a colonel on April 4, 1862. His unit fought at the Battle of Shiloh in Tennessee, then moved into Kentucky on a raid leaving Knoxville on the 4th of July, 1862. There he managed to capture 1,200 Union soldiers and several hundred horses before returning to Tennessee, where he was made a general in December, 1862. And then came the raid that made him famous. In the summer of 1863, the Confederacy had invaded Pennsylvania, where they met up with Union forces at Gettysburg. About the same time, Union General Ulysses S. Grant was fighting Confederate defenders at Vicksburg. General Morgan decided it might be possible to lure some of those Union forces away with a daring raid in the north. So he and his men set off on what became known as Morgan's Raid, crossing the Ohio River into Indiana and Ohio. They fought their way across both states, including Corridon, Indiana, where they battled the local home guard with 11 Confederates and five home guard killed. In July, Morgan's men raided Versailles, Indiana, looting county and city treasuries and stealing the local Masonic Lodge's jewels, which Morgan, a Freemason himself, returned the next day. Well, during that month, Morgan and his men worked their way across the Ohio Valley. On July 19th, about 700 of his men were captured trying to cross the Ohio River into West Virginia when they were intercepted by Union gunboats. 300 of his men managed to make it across the river. And finally, on July 26th, Morgan and his men were captured near Salineville, Ohio. This was the farthest north any Confederate force was able to reach directly from the Confederacy now. There were other raids that were done in Vermont, but they really didn't amount to a whole lot, just a a few scattered soldiers that came over from Canada. Uh, So not really a a raid straight from the Confederacy up to Vermont. Anyway, Morgan and his men were placed in the Ohio State Penitentiary, where on November 27th, he and six of his officers managed to escape by digging a tunnel from one of their cells into the inner prison yard, from which they climbed the outer wall with a makeshift rope. Shortly after midnight, Morgan and three of his men boarded a train at Columbus, arriving in Cincinnati the next morning. To escape detection, the four men jumped off the train 
actually just before it arrived at the Cincinnati station and made their way across the Ohio into Kentucky. Then, with the aid of Confederate sympathizers in Kentucky, they managed to make it all the way back to Tennessee. Well, John Hunt Morgan continued to raid Kentucky from East Tennessee up until June of 1864, leading to the eventual destruction of his force by Union-mounted forces. Only a few, including Morgan, escaped to return to the South. On August 22, 1864, John Hunt Morgan was placed in command of the Trans-Allegheny Department, which had authority over Confederate forces in East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. He began to plan a raid into Knoxville, which was, at this time, in Union hands. Morgan's headquarters was in Greenville, Tennessee, and he never had the chance to conduct his raid as the Union got to him first. On September 3rd, 1864, the 13th Tennessee Cavalry, USA, led by Lieutenant Colonel William H. Ingerton, learned that Morgan was staying at the Dixon Williams Mansion in Greenville. He ordered his men to, quote, dash into town, surround the Williams residence, and bring Morgan out, dead or alive. Well, the raid lasted the rest of the day into the next. Federal forces surprised the Confederates, and Morgan taking his chances, ran from the house seeking a way to escape, against the advice of his officers to stay put and wait for reinforcements. Morgan said to them, The boys cannot get in here in time. The Yankees will never take me prisoner again. Morgan and his officers ran to the nearby St. James Episcopal Church, where they hid under the floor until they heard Union soldiers enter the church. He then ran out towards some grape arbors near the Williams stables trying to get to his horse. Unfortunately, he found that the Tennessee soldiers had surrounded the house and stables, trapping him. In the end, Morgan tried to simply walk away in the noise and confusion. A Union private, Andrew Campbell, saw Morgan and ordered him to halt. Well, Morgan didn't pay any attention to that. He continued to walk, ignoring the order. So Campbell then shot and killed General Morgan. John Morgan's body was placed for public viewing in the Dixon Williams Mansion for the residents of Greenville to view and pay their respects. His remains were then sent to his second wife, Maddie Reedy Morgan, in Abingdon, Virginia, where he had a proper funeral, the largest, it said, that was ever held in that southwest Virginia town. He was then buried in the Sinking Spring Cemetery, then removed a few days later and sent to Richmond for a Confederate state funeral, then reburied in Hollywood Cemetery there. In 1868, Morgan's remains were again disinterred and taken to Lexington, Kentucky for a third funeral and a final burial, with more than 2,000 mourners in attendance. He rests today in the Hunt-Morgan plot in Lexington Cemetery. The General Morgan Inn in Greenville is named after General John Hunt Morgan. And here's a little something for you. It is said by some that General Morgan still haunts the General Morgan Inn, along with some other ghosts. I don't know if you were aware of that. No, I wasn't aware of that. And also a little bit of information for you, too. You know, we mentioned a name in there, the Lexington Rifles. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was a... Uh, minor league baseball team based out of Lexington, Kentucky several years ago. I'm not sure what the name of the team is now since all the baseball realignment and all the uh, farm club teams have been kind of taken away. But at one time, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the name of the baseball team there were the Lexington Rifles. And now you know how they got that name. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, that's the story of John Hunt Morgan. Confederate general and leader of the most successful raid into Union territory during the Civil War. Thanks for listening. Now, you can subscribe to the Stories Podcast in a whole lot of ways at Apple Podcasts, for example, Spotify, Odyssey, Stitcher, Good Pods, Audible, or if you don't like any of those, just pick your own favorite podcast app. Till next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody. 